Unfortunately, there's no such thing as an attorney approved paperwork packet for all therapists, but you can know the basic guidelines so that you know when you purchase a paperwork packet or create one yourself, you know that you have all of the necessary forms. Hi, I'm Dr. Melissa McCaffrey, founder of the free private practice paperwork crash course. And today I'm gonna to walk you through all of the forms that you need for the basics of your paperwork packet in a private practice. The first most important and probably most common form that you hear talked about is an informed consent document. Now, some people's informed consent form is one or two pages and other people's is six or seven pages. So you can get really in depth with this and there's some benefit to doing that, but there's also a benefit to keeping that form shorter so that it's easier for you to review with clients and easier for clients to understand. Personally, I recommend having a combination of the two. So having a more in depth informed consent document, but having a first page that just kind of briefly walks through the key points that you want to make sure every client knows things like the limits to confidentiality, maybe your cancellation policies, and any other thing that you think is really, really important to highlight. Put that on the first page in bullet points and then identify that they can look through the rest of the form for all the details. This way you're covered legally, but practically you're also giving people a form that makes more sense. So what are the things you wanna have in your informed consent document? Well, we're gonna have a whole separate video just on that form because it is pretty detailed. But in general, you wanna think about limits to confidentiality and your basic policies around payment and cancellation. The important thing with this document and the whole reason it is such a big deal is that you wanna lay the groundwork for what is to be expected by you and by clients in the therapy process. The next form you wanna have is a telehealth consent form. And yes, I do recommend having it as a separate form because for one, not all of your clients may need it, so it may not apply to everyone. But two, a lot of states recommend or require that you actually have a fully separate telehealth consent form. Now this can usually be a much shorter thing. It's one page, maybe a few paragraphs, and it just highlights things like what will happen if someone can't log in, or if you can't log in, how will you contact them? It gives all the specifics so that people aren't lost in the process. And it also goes through the added potential risks or things to consider. So things like the fact that you need to know the address of where someone is when you're seeing them, and that they might wanna consider who is in the background and could potentially hear what's going on. Now you might have to also add on a few other consent forms. So for example, if you see couples, it's really helpful to have a separate consent form, or if you only see couples, just integrate it in that first informed consent form. But you wanna talk about things like your secrets policy, what are expectations for whether or not each person in the couple can or will see you individually and when that would happen, how you help them deal with conflict, um, how you deal with outside communication from one or both of them, things like that. Similarly, if you work with kids or teens, you also wanna have a separate consent form that really outlines how you communicate with each of them. So again, with keeping secrets, letting kids know that you don't tell their parents everything that happens in session and letting parents know that you are not gonna tell them everything that happens in their kid's session. But also recognizing that parents do need some information and making sure that the kid or teen and the parent all know when you expect to communicate with the other and in what way you would do that and under what circumstances. And remember, for all these things, it's not that you have to outline exactly how you're gonna handle every situation because you'll never be able to do that. But you do wanna give people an idea of the common things that come up in these scenarios and what is likely to happen. And then if you're nervous, you can always add a statement about how this is up to your discretion or that circumstances may vary. The next form that you'll wanna have is your HIPAA form. So this is if you're in the United States. And we commonly call it the HIPAA form, but really it's called a notice of privacy practices. Now this form is easy and free to get from the US government. They have a great version 
And the only thing with that form is that it's meant for all healthcare professionals. So it covers things like what to do with organs and surgeries and things that don't apply to us. So I have adapted this form for mental health professionals and you can click in the description below this video to get a copy of that. Next, you may wanna have a symptoms questionnaire or some kind of problems checklist. Although I encourage you to have clients actually write out, you know, whether typing or writing, um, their problems that they're coming to therapy for, it's also helpful to give them some ideas and maybe there are things that they haven't considered, but if you give them a prompt through a checklist, they will actually check it off because they recognize that it may be connected. This also makes it really easy for you to quickly scan what they've completed and see what might be the most important issues that they're coming to see you for. Plus you may do other questionnaires like a GAD or PHQ-9 or other things that you find helpful. So include those here as part of your whole packet. The next big form you'll wanna have is your biopsychosocial intake form. So people use all different ways to describe this form as is the case with a lot of other documentation. But basically this is the big form that covers the client's history. So it's like their intake history. And I recommend you have clients fill this out because they know their history and when they fill it out, then it saves both of you time so that no one is having to complete this form in your first session and you get to see what the client uses, what their own phrases are, how they word things. So it helps you build rapport quickly and kind of dig into exactly what it is they want support with. So make it easy for yourself. Have clients complete all of these forms before they even come into your office or show up for their teletherapy session. The next thing you'll want as part of your packet is note templates. And I do recommend that you have a separate intake note template. So at least one intake note template and one note template that's for typical sessions that you're gonna do ongoing. The benefit of having an intake note template is that you're not writing out the same thing over and over because intake sessions do look pretty similar and you're covering the same things with clients. So create check boxes for all those things and have that note ready to go. Next, you'll also want to have a treatment plan template. So if you use an electronic health record, you may be limited as to how much you can personalize this template and you might be stuck with whatever treatment plan they use. Or you can create your own template and then upload that. You can use what the EHR has, or some EHRs now are allowing you to create your own treatment plan within their system. And we'll link to a video here that goes through what you wanna have in a treatment plan template so that you know exactly what components to include there. Lastly, you wanna have some kind of a case summary template. And the idea with this is not to do like a closing summary at the end, because in my personal viewpoint, why rewrite everything that's already in the file? So most of the time, I don't think you need a closing summary or a discharge summary. However, it can be helpful to have a templated case summary so that if you ever get requests for records or letters or anything like that, you're able to quickly use the template you've created without having to reinvent the wheel every single time. And the key here is with most requests, you're really sticking to just the facts. So dates that this person has been in treatment, maybe a diagnosis, treatment goals, and progress made in therapy so far. Now, I know it seems like a lot, but once you get all these forms together, you don't have to make that many changes after the fact. So it's a lot of work up front, but it really helps with a payoff moving forward. And you can create your own paperwork packet. You can search the internet and find templates for all of these different documents and probably you know 20 more if you wanted to add those too. So it'll be a little bit more of your time, but it's totally doable. You can also purchase a paperwork packet. So I offer a paperwork packet. Lots of other therapists offer their own paperwork packets for sale. You have options there. The thing I would encourage you to look at when you are deciding whether or not to purchase someone else's paperwork packet is how many forms are they actually giving you? So does it cover all those basic forms that you're gonna need? Does this person work in a similar capacity to you? So are they an LPC in Wisconsin and you are a psychologist in Texas? You might have slightly different requirements. So you wanna make sure that the person who has created the paperwork packet has addressed that fact 
and knows that whatever their particular state or license requirements are is very different across other states and other license requirements. And if they don't address this, then absolutely ask them before you purchase that packet. Now, an extra step that I've included as part of my paperwork packet is really highlighting all the different sections that you'll need to change. Because yes, I don't care how awesome that paperwork packet is, there are things you will need to change. So you'll not only need to add like your own name and address, but you'll also need to add what are your personal policies. So I try to make it really easy for you by highlighting what those are so you can quickly walk through and get all of that done within a day. And lastly, just remember that no paperwork packet is going to be absolutely perfect. Um, I try to make one that's nearly perfect, but nothing's gonna be perfect for you until you personalize it. And you will need to change it at some point in your career. Things will change, you'll decide that you wanna change different policies, and that's okay. If you'd like to check out my paperwork packet, you can click below, go into the video description and click that link and you can check it out there. Happy writing.